Hey guys, Chris from Provo Beast Audio Installation, and today we're doing an unboxing of this Pioneer AVH W4500 NEX. In this unboxing, we're going to show you everything that this radio comes with, including all the accessories, and we'll also get this thing powered up so you can see the menu and interface. Let's go ahead and get started. First and foremost, what's cool about this unit, it does have uh, wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Here also has Miracast for Android phones, it includes an HDMI port, has Bluetooth, AUX, USB 1 and 2, it's Sirius XM radio, HD radio. This thing is pretty fully loaded. Also has a CD and DVD as well, hidden back behind our main display. Display even comes off as well for security purposes. So really nice unit. Let's go ahead and uh, start pulling this thing apart. All right, so starting in the top here, the first harness that we have, this is our accessory harness. Essentially here, this harness has your pre-outs, your RCA outputs and inputs for cameras, videos, um, amplifiers, etc. Next thing here is we have a GPS antenna. Now this GPS isn't for onboard navigation. This essentially helps with uh, wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. We have our main wiring harness adapter. This wiring harness adapter will need to be married up to the wiring harness adapter of the vehicle that you're stalling to. We have a USB extension. We have a Bluetooth microphone. We have mounting hardware. We have a remote. We also have manual and startup information. Now it does come with a little case for the screen because the screen is detachable. Pioneer includes this case so you can slide the screen inside this case to keep it nice and protected. Finally here we have the radio itself. Okay so with this radio all ready to go and pulled out of the box let's go ahead and talk about first and foremost the hard buttons across the bottom. We'll talk about the touchscreen display a little bit later on. But starting on the left hand side here, you have your volume up and volume down button. It's nice that you still have hard buttons so you don't have to do it literally on the radio itself. Then from there you have your picture and picture button. Essentially here you can take it back to the previous option there. You got your main home button and if you also hold that down it's your main power button as well. Then right here you have your display or um, it could be your quick jump to your backup camera view as well as you hold it down it's mute or attenuation. Then you have your back button or if you hold down forward uh, the display settings there. Then you also have your mute button and your um, display open button when we hit this button what it'll do is it'll actually slide open and allow us to access certain um, ports like the DVD CD slot as well as your mic tuner as well as an SD card there on the back all right so here on the back starting on the very left hand side we'll talk about these ports starting from left to right um, this one bottom left hand corner this is your rear audio output in case you have um, a flip down monitor or other external um, devices that can display video and audio. Um, you can use that commonly used with uh, rear seat entertainment. You can have a dedicated audio output to go to those devices. For example, if you have uh, IR headphones or anything like that, that's what that's used for. Just above that is your WR input or wired remote input for steering wheel controls. But again, they're not aux ports. The aux input is actually located on the accessory harness that'll go here, which we will cover here in a moment. We have our GPS antenna port, USB port 1 and 2, both 5 volts and 1.5 and amps. If you look very closely at the instructions, generally speaking, USB port 1 is used for Apple CarPlay. USB 2 is used for Android Auto. This little port here is your 25 millimeter uh, mic input with the included mic that comes in the box that plugs in there. Then we have our main power harness socket and 10 amp fuse. That's where this guy will go ahead and plug into. We have a big heat sink and fan on the back of the radio. Then we have our iDataLink Maestro port here, or data port, where we'd plug that in if we were using that sort of harness and adapter. Brings onboard features like um, climate control as well as vehicle information and gauges through that data port if so equipped. Then we have our HDMI port back in there as well as this little clip. Then we have our Sirius XM port as well with the optional add-on tuner. Then we have our accessory harness here. Now it's this big harness that plugs in there. We have our add-on 
navigation module in case you want to add onboard navigation to this native navigation you can add that there then finally we have our AFFM um, standard size Motorola um, antenna input there so those are our main inputs and outputs on the back of the radio let's talk about this accessory harness here next all right so look at let's look at the accessory harness here a little bit closer we'll start with the shortest length first now you have your rear output for rca preamp this is essentially if you're adding an external amplifier this is for your rear speakers this is for your front speakers so you have your front output as well so there's your fronts and rears now your subwoofer is a little bit longer it's right here it's just your sub out and essentially here same thing it's your pre preamp for volt pre out for a an amplifier if you're choosing. We also have our aux input as well. Now this aux does carry a video input if needed. So you can do both audio and video input through this aux. We have our backup camera input, rear view camera. And we also have another uh, video input that can be switchable to a front camera input if we so choose. Now we also have a video output for a rear monitor. So essentially if we installed a, a flip down screen, we already talked about on the radio itself that it has um, audio output on the back of the radio where here, here is your video output for a rear flip down monitor, or rear seat entertainment. And finally here, we have an RCA input or audio input. So you have your composite yellow, red and white inputs. So that's your accessory harness. Again, super important, you do not lose these. So that's about it for the accessories in the box as well as the radio itself what we're going to do is throw a little power at it so you have an opportunity to quickly just navigate and see the menu all right so let's go ahead and simulate um, the radio booting up in the vehicle so yeah you can say select your language there the network mode essentially converts the audio output of the radio to a tweeter mid subwoofer setup or standard mode keeps it into front rear sub. Generally speaking, you probably just want standard mode. Here's our main interface, which is super cool. Really nice touch screen here. Um, you have your phone options, HD radio disc, USB one, Pandora, as well as your additional AV sources. You have your Bluetooth setup and menu, as well as your settings menu. You can also adjust your clock and date there at the top. We look at all our sources here on the radio. Starting on the top here, we have our HD radio disc, USB one and Pandora. Cool thing is you can move these around. So if you want to put your Bluetooth audio in there, you certainly can. You have your mirroring as well. That's super nice because you can cast from an, uh, an applicable device right to your radio itself wirelessly. You have your HDMI input, you have your USB 2 because remember there's one and two on the back of the radio. Wi-Fi audio, this does have onboard Wi-Fi. That's essentially what your Android Auto and Apple CarPlay will use to connect wirelessly. Your Sirius XM, that port would illuminate if you had the applicable tuner added on. You have your SD card, which is back behind the screen itself. Once this flips down, we'll show you where that looks like in a minute. That's where you can install an SD card. We have our aux, remember that's on our accessory harness if you have that hooked up. You have your AV input, again it's on the accessory harness. Now what's cool is you have your rear, meaning your rear seat uh, controls. Essentially here this has dual zone functionality where you can have a different source out of your front speakers and a different source coming out of your rear speakers. So if kids are watching a show, um, you don't want to hear it up front. You can just set that your rear audio is specifically set to watching the movie where your front audio for those in the front seats, you can still listen to the radio or a disc or something else, which is super nice. Mirror the front or specifically set a source for the rear outputs. Uh, car sources and car features, these would illuminate if you had the add-on iData Link Maestro device or um, smart harness. Essentially here, this pulls data from the vehicle and allows you to control climate, uh, view gauges, and view car data information right on the radio itself. You have your backup camera. Essentially here, this is your camera option to view what's behind you while not in reverse. So if you hook up your camera 
and uh, hook it up to accessories so it's powered on just when the vehicle is running rather than just seeing it in reverse let's say you're towing you want to see what's behind you you can quickly jump to the camera mode and see what's there finally here you can turn your sources off or you can totally shut down the unit with those options as well so those are your main sources that this radio includes if we jump into our HD radio option again you can adjust your tuner here you can set your favorites you can also jump straight to your EQ and your settings on the right hand side and you can do that from most audio sources you have your disc obviously we don't have a disc in there but if there was one in there that would illuminate whether it's a CD or DVD same thing with USB Bluetooth audio now your Bluetooth will be set up once you pair your phone. You generally don't use Bluetooth if you're using CarPlay or Android Auto, whether wirelessly or wired. However, the unit does use Bluetooth to authenticate the device that you're looking to add. So when you're looking to pair your applicable smartphone to this radio and you want to set up wireless CarPlay, for example, you first need to pair with Bluetooth before you go ahead and pair with um, the wireless CarPlay. Got your Pandora screen mirroring. So generally speaking, this is used through an Android device that has the option for Mirrorcast. Um, so you can cast your device to the radio itself. Again, generally for Android users, not iPhone users. Again, there's your aux, your receipt entertainment, camera view. So those are your main sources here on the left hand side. Again, here's your volume up and volume down here on the left hand side. You have your main home button in the center. Again, this is your back button as well as your display button. So if we hold that down, it gives you display options. You shut down the display completely. You got your push to talk button, which is your little mic. And again, your hard button here to open up the flip down screen. So let's go ahead and do that. So if you go ahead and hit this button itself, it's gonna give you a couple of options across the bottom. You can open this up to insert a disc, an SD card, or you can adjust your radio. You can adjust it down, in or out. So if you need it, depending on where it is mounted in the dash itself, you can make that adjustment. Or if you wanna go ahead and remove the screen, you push that button, you can unclip it here on the backhand side and pull the screen off completely. Now finally, let's show you what's back behind here. So if we hit this button, it's gonna flip all the way down. You have your SD card slot input as well as your tuning mic. Okay, so that's about it for the hard buttons there as well as the soft buttons. Let's quickly just go over the settings inside um, the menu itself. Now you can set up your favorites and to do so you just click on the star which will put it here in your favorites menu in case there's a certain setting that you like to visit often. Now your main settings here, you have first and foremost your AV settings. You can adjust your radio settings, XM and Bluetooth audio, smartphone related settings, auto mix, iPhone, iPod. You got your input output settings, your AV input, you can select these as on or off. Now what's cool about that, like I said before, for the AV video input, because it is selectable, whether it's actual video input or you can set it to camera, which is super nice. You have your camera settings here. So this is your backup camera view on or off. You can set that to on, whether it's the, back, the backup camera input, you want that on. Secret camera input, this is gonna be off, um, unless you have a front camera that you'd like to install. Reverse gear setting, we set this to battery, it's gonna see 12 volts when we put it in reverse, and you can adjust your parking guideline. Now here you have your Wi-Fi settings, you can set your Wi-Fi on or off, device information, password for the Wi-Fi, and the actual password reset if needed. You can turn your beep tone on or off, you can adjust and calibrate the touch screen by going in this menu, you can set your dimmer options as auto, on or off. Here's your system information, this is your theme settings. So you can set your background. There's preset backgrounds that are available or you can upload your own, which is pretty cool. You can set different themes and theme colors. You can also set the illumination color to whatever you like, which is your buttons down below. You can also set the style of clock, both for AV and your main home button. Now it's cool is now you can adjust your splash screen. This is what differs between the 4400 and the 4500. For your audio settings, obviously, uh, with generally every Pioneer, you have your graphic e EQ here. You got your 13 band. You can set it to the preset bands or do your custom ones up and down. You also have your um, 
fader and balance. You can adjust the audio based on which speaker you want it primarily to come out of. You've got your mute level, which is a full on mute or just attenuation, or you can turn it completely off if needed. Source level adjuster, essentially here if you have um, one source that's louder than another source, you can adjust those sources so they all kind of match. You got your subwoofer on and off. So you can turn your subwoofer on just like that. You can set certain speaker levels here. Now diff different dBs depending on your listening position. So let's say we're gonna do a listening position to front left. You can set different crossovers here. Now you got front, rear, and sub. And you can set high pass, low pass. You have your subwoofer settings here. And again, it kind of takes you back to your crossover points, listening position. That's where we've also talked about the time alignment time alignment is on you can automatically adjust that now what's cool about this we saw previously that it was based on the db level but in this specific section since we're based here in the u.s it looks like we have an inch option it allows you to actually measure the distance between that speaker and your listening ear now here's your auto EQ. This would illuminate if we had the auto EQ microphone installed, um, listening and tuning for us. Now you can save your settings. You can load settings. It's really nice, especially if you spend the time to get everything set up so you don't lose it if the negative comes off the battery. You got ASL, you got bass boost, you got your rear speaker output, you got your loudness option, low, mid, high, or off automatic level control, which it makes those adjustments for you. And then sound retriever. Then finally, we have our uh, Bluetooth settings. Now with your connection itself, you can go in there and go ahead and connect your device, go open up your Bluetooth settings on your phone itself and select the radio so you can go ahead and pair it. Once you go ahead and pair it, it'll ask you to confirm on the radio itself, which you can do. It'll automatically set up auto connection. So every time you turn on the vehicle, it'll pair for you. Visibility is on. This needs to be on in order for you to see it on your phone itself. If you need to reset the pin, you can and device information. So that's just a quick overview of this radio's menu there. We could spend a ton more time going through this. We just don't have that time. So um, hopefully this was useful to you. If you have any questions on what we did here, post a comment below. If you want to see this radio in action, we're actually going to be putting this in a Ford F-150. So check that video on out. We'll have a link in the description as well as a card up above. Be sure to hit that like button if you like what you saw and uh, don't forget to subscribe. We post great content on the channel here all the time. Again, we appreciate you watching and we will see you in the next video.